Hello, how's it going? Today, we start in Chapter 4 of Chronicle Volume 1 and we'll be talking about the World Tree and the Sentinels. And it's going to be bloody amazing, hopefully. Let's go! With the World Tree broken and the Well of Eternity gone, the source of the Night Elves' arcane powers was lost. They fled northwest to Mount Hyjal to seek refuge. On the way, Malfurion and the other Night Elves had a bit of a brain trust meeting and decided arcane magic was not safe. Moving forward, they would prohibit its use to avoid another catastrophe, and they felt really pleased with themselves. But then they arrived at Mount Hyjal and they were horrified to discover a second, smaller Well of Eternity and a familiar face standing at its shores, Illidan. Before the Sundering, he'd filled several vials with the enchanted liquid from the original well and poured some into the lake atop Hyjal, making a new one. He stood there, huge smile on his face, expecting everyone to be like, Way! But instead, most of the Night Elves were like, Get him! Violence erupted, and Malfurion was forced to step in and restrain Illidan. Illidan insisted his actions had been necessary. The Night Elves needed arcane power if they had any hope of fighting the Burning Legion when, not if, they returned. And then he said, I'm not even sorry. Some of the surviving Highborn agreed, but the majority of Night Elves did as far as they were concerned, Illidan's selfish act had basically just given the Legion another opportunity to build a gateway. And Illidan was like, I'm still not even sorry. So the Night Elves decided the only option was to imprison Illidan. Of course they did. Everybody gets imprisoned in Warcraft. Malfurion and Cenarius enacted this punishment. Malfurion then tasked the Priestess Maiev Shadow Song with standing guard over the Sorcerer's Prison. She would later go on to create an elite order of Night Elf Jailers, known as the Wardens. Three of the great dragon aspects heard of this second well, and they weren't too happy about it either. So, Alexstrasza used her powers to plant an enchanted seed, which would turn into a mighty tree over the new Well of Eternity. Its roots grew deep into the earth, and the tree itself grew to tickle the belly of the heavens. Thereafter, the tree would act as a seal over the new well, preventing the Legion or anyone else from abusing its powers. Malfurion and the Night Elves decided to call this massive tree Nordrasil, which means Crown of the Heavens, but also kind of sounds like the name of a cream for testicles or something. Do you have ball problems? Are your Nords itchy? Well, try Nordrasil! But anyway, they vowed to keep the ball tree safe. The Aspects decided to bless the Night Elves so they could fulfil this task. Alexstrasza infused Nordrasil with renewed strength and vitality, which also extended to the Night Elves as well. Isira bound the Tree and the Night Elf Druids to the Emerald Dream, allowing them to be able to journey into the realm much more easily whenever they wished. Nosdormu wove his energies through the Tree, assuring that as long as the Tree stood, the Night Elves would possess immortality. As you can probably tell, something's gonna happen to the Tree, eventually. The Aspects buggered off, their work here was done. Their enchantments would ensure that the Well of Eternity would no longer act as a beacon to demons, and that the Legion would not easily be able to use it as a gateway to Azeroth. It was now a symbol of the Night Elves' connection to the natural world, a monument that empowered their race with immunity to sickness, disease, and aging. And Cenarius probably cried a little bit and was like, I never knew there was such a thing as a perfect day. 600 years later, Night Elf society had expanded into the forests of Ashenvale. Tyrande led the Night Elves in rebuilding society. The Sisterhood of Elune was uniquely positioned to fill the power vacuum among the Elves. They were leaders of both government and military. Tyrande had also forged a new fighting force, the Sentinels, a group of highly trained warrior women dedicated to protecting society. The captain of this group was Chandris Feathermoon. She'd been orphaned during the Legion invasion and taken under Tyrande's care. She'd distinguished herself in combat throughout the conflict and had earned a place by Tyrande's side thereafter. Meanwhile, Malfurion was all up in people's faces about druidism, but Having abandoned arcane magic, many elves embraced Malfurion's teachings. They weren't as disciplined as the Sentinels, though, and lacked the same sort of military structure. They spent most of their time experimenting on things like shapeshifting, like being bears and cats and big chickens and stuff. They'd also regularly journey through the Emerald Dream, and as a result would often be in a state of hibernation for long periods. If Chronicles said they also spent a lot of time eating snacks, I'd say they were basically just stoners. But the Druids' behaviour kinda annoyed Tyrande and her Sentinels. They'd request help from the Druids in safeguarding the lands, but the Druids were always bloody asleep. And the Sentinels have every right to be concerned because this is Warcraft and things always go wrong. Hiding in the dark corners of the world were the Satyr. One Satyr in particular, named Zalan the Feared, was rallying them and girding them for war. There were also some remnants of the Burning Legion left over that had been trapped on Azeroth after the Sundering that were drawn to the Satyr's call. As one, this demonic army launched its first assault on the stronghold of Nightrun, plunging the fragile Night Elf society into war once again. And that's terrible. And we're leaving it there! Five minutes into chapter four and another bloody war starting. When will these people catch a break? In the next video, we'll be talking about the war that I just set up, obviously, but we'll also see the introduction of a new race called Worgen, as in werewolves, which is bloody amazing. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed and come back on Friday. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, talk to me in the comments. The Mythic Dungeon Invitational is coming back pretty soon. I'm quite excited. I was surprised how much I enjoyed watching the first one because I don't usually watch a lot of esports. Anybody else going to be watching that or is it one of those things you couldn't care less about? Let me know. 
But all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!